Hello, friends. This is Giuliano, and it is Monday, the 28th of March, 2022. And we have the, a breakout of Bitcoin price chart. It is now the BTC pump update. And it's bittersweet in some sense. I realize that I missed it. I missed, I missed that D wave finishing and the E wave beginning and the E wave finishing, but it was right there in front of our eyes on the previous video. And I, I, I'm struggling to see how I missed, but because I even pointed it out. But here we are. It's it's right here. I'm showing you the screen is the BTC USD chart on the daily time frame. If you watched the previous video, you'll know we had this two to four trend line being aggressed upon by this finishing wave of our long-term downtrend, expected to be a, a fifth wave, this whole thing, um, which is corrective wave because it's a, a terminal impulse pattern of completing, uh, like making a, a, a five wave move, impulsive move to complete this C wave of a massive flat pattern. And I was just wondering, when's it coming? Where's it coming? When are we getting this turnaround? It was right here. We mi I missed it. And so for that, I apologize. Here we go. I want to show you something. It was probably much easier to see on the, on the um, four-hour time chart. But I'm going to zoom in here. And I'd like to show you, you know, how the daily candle really respected it and how the um, we'll look on it on four hour it'll probably make more sense but when we're taking this triangle we're going to take this b to d trend line okay so we take the b to d trend line and boom like this is quite interesting stuff here b to d trend line okay i mean it makes sense you would have a, a downtrending resistance that once it gets broken out it gets um it, it gets found as support that's what we had here okay breakout support so i'm gonna just jump over to the four hour time frame and basically say this became our e-wave right here these two red candles right here this is our e-wave in that sense and when when i just go into a line chart maybe it'll come out easier and there it is right here that's that's what i'm calling here um i mean ultimately am i just fitting an elliott wave pattern onto the price chart Yes, because I didn't see it earlier. And now I'm seeing something that matches what it would have been. However, that's generally what Elliott Wave forecasting is about. It's, it's about seeing what price patterns have taken place in order to determine what is the current market structure and where might it be going. And so, okay, so let's talk about where it might be going. Now that we are well convinced that this is the breakout, look, we broke out from the 61.8% of the A wave. Mm -hmm which is very bullish in terms of this being a terminal impulse pattern uh, on this C wave down. Okay, so where could we reach? Uh, it looks like it'll be reaching around 52K if we use the A wave and we, um, and we, and we extend it from the end of the E wave. And we look at that A wave here from extending from the E wave where it ends and the, this new impulsive move begins. One to one is about 52,000, give or take 25%. So around 50,000 here at the 78.6 roughly level and up to 125%, which is probably here around the 50, what, through 53, 55, whatever that is. But I, I, I'm seeing this here, 52 seems quite reasonable liquidity type moves. Mm, yeah, and also it's just technical. It's a technical technical move, 100% uh, of the A wave from the end of the C, E wave right here, the end of the E wave there. So, I mean, is this what's happening? Is Have we done it? Is that the completion of the pattern? Um, possibly, in which case, anyway, we'll get rid of this time line. The, the 22nd is really the breakout um, of this triangle to the upside, not so much the 28th. And here we are today on the 28th, about 61% of the way towards this $52,000 level. So we'll see if we get there. Arguably, there will be a pullback as well. If, if we get a pullback at some point, and let's say it's coming now where we hit our first major resistance zones, let's just imagine a pullback from here, from this level here. 
and we're looking, oh, let's say fairly at about 38.2 would be a 45 or 46,000 level if it were to have a significant enough pullback to you know, test some previous uh, resist, resistances as, as support and then move higher. But don't necessarily count on a pullback. Although if there is, that seems fair down to this 38% level, it might, it, it might not even, and let's say just absolutely, how much would that be of a pullback? So we go to, what did we say? 45, 45, one, something like that. And so that's what, 5%. So an overall of a 5% move down, even not even 10% type stuff. So, yep, okay. So look, like that's, that's a, a possibility. Obviously, if it breaks below that, then this is just a deviation to the upside and we really have to rethink what's going on. But uh, yeah, I'd like to say, you know, we broke out from this two to four trend line. We were really hugging it. This is quite a fascinating overall terminal impulse pattern if that is the correct attribute uh, and construction that has been attributed here. So yeah, anyway, let's see onward and upward. <clears throat> the general sense is if this is true, if this is a flat pattern, probably in April uh, or May, right? That's the, the expectation is we are breaking above this, um, this zero to be trend line, which takes us, let's say into the uh, mid 70,000s just to begin with. So there you go. Um, yeah, let's take a look on the four hourly just to go, let's get rid of some of this. So where would that be? Um, that would be right here. Okay, in this zone here. Can't say exactly where was it yet. So this was a B, C, uh, it looked like D was here and E was here. Yeah, these are not the returns. And then here's that uh, support test. You see that? So this kind of uh, B to D trend line with um, you know just making sure that it's supported and then it was gone. So there you have it. That's our move, I'm gonna just show you here. It was a, a, B, C, D, E type of move, okay? So where was it? Sorry, maybe it was here. There's 22, no, it was here. Oh my, that's where, why it did look so good. So it was even here. That was, That's why this retest didn't look so strong. It was this retest, it showed better. Uh, wait, that's what we were saying. So it wasn't this, it was this right here. Okay, that makes that makes our sense. Um, on a mine, on a small scale, like a four hour chart, to count every single little wave and move becomes pointless exercise if it doesn't fit the bigger picture. So really, it's about the bigger picture imposing its power onto the lower time frames. And so yeah, um, so there you have it. This was the 20, 19, 20. 22nd right here. Yep. What a time. So there you have it. I think that's it. I gave you a bit of a, a potential upside target here. We have also this potential support zone down here if need be. But I mean, at this point, uh, you're lucky to hit the below 46,000. I think maybe 46 will hold psychological. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter at that point. Um, what really matters is just staying above the, the this previous resistance level. Okay, that's it for now. We do have like a lot of these momentum indicators are showing tops, but they can cycle for a little bit, you know, and price can go wild at that point. So uh, especially on the daily, we get back to the, like, for example, the, uh, the RSI hasn't even gone into the overbought position yet. So mm, still below 70 there on that indicator. Anyway, yeah, interesting times. Stick around for more, okay. Um, Stick around for more and I look forward to uh, bringing that to you. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Let's, uh, let's get that 52K going. All right. And I'll be back with some weekly roundups. We'll look at uh, more in terms of, you know, 
weekly price chart and all that good stuff. Mm, yeah, this is definitely <laughs> looking really strong. We have not even retraced yet. And a 61% retrace of this would be the bearish move. So even down to 41K, but I don't think it's going to be that weak, not based on the lower time frames. So yeah, anyway, but we'll see. Good times. Okay. And did we flip into the positive? We did. We are in a green histogram. Wow. That went fast. You know what? The difference between all of these relatively positive direction here, but then to this, to this histogram bar on the, in the 21st, like the previous week of March, and then up into positive. Wow. There was a big jump last week and we went positive now on the green side of things just as we're hitting the resistance. So let's see how this goes. Good times. Okay, that's it for me. I'm done for now. Back to the, oh, we, and then we have a monthly candle close very soon. And Bollinger Bands, looking good. Wow. Okay, back to the weekly. Yeah, we are now officially above the 20 week moving average. So at best, like look for that as support. So that's right now at 44 and a half thousand. So maybe you get a wick down there or something. Who knows? But I don't know. It might not even have to touch it yet. Might get support later on. You know, something like this. What happened here? Okay. All right, cool. That's it. I did it. How many times do I need to say that? Maybe I need to go to the daily first. And yeah, that's the other thing. Oh, let me just get that 200. That's what I wanted to show. We're also rejecting at the 200. Okay and 200 daily moving average. And also, you know, we've got this, um, we've, we've got this, this big cloud here. That's, that was one reason that, that it was pretty unclear, like in terms of resistance, where would, where would we start breaking out? We started getting more narrow here, but price decided to just pop a lot of compression in this time period here between, um, and between middle of February to uh, basically middle of March. Uh, two months, six weeks or so of massive consolidation and then pop up to the 200 day moving average, rejecting there. Let's see where it goes. Okay. We're at the top of the Bollinger Band. See what kind of, um, what kind of pause is needed, if any, yet on the daily. We'll see. Wicked. Okay. Until next time. Yeah. I am wishing you love, peace, happiness, lots of BTC, and of course, all of the sovereignty, self-sovereignty that it brings. Goodbye.